And the world of sports comes alive with Breakfast Central. One man has been caught while trying to get uh, into a plane with uh, some metal knuckles. Dokan Joko is here to give us that blow-by-blow -blow account of what took place. Good morning to you, Doka. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Olive. And Joe, I've been waiting for you to be on set, but hey. It's fine, no I'm here. No matter how long it takes, I'll still drag you. I'll still, I'll still <laughs> it's fine. I, I mean, I like they say in Nigerian palace, uh, <laughs> I don't know. drag me like generator. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's interesting that Joe says you're here to give us a blow by blow. No, exactly. Yes, yes. So you're about to punch. talk about metal knuckles. Mm. The first punch for Joe, what is going on with Chelsea and the Graham Potter? Well, the last time I checked, uh, some of Chelsea players are actually going to the World Cup. Uh, uh -huh. They include uh, some fantastic players like uh, uh, Sterling, who's going to the World Cup. You should watch <laughs> him play. Uh, Mason Mount, uh -huh. uh, not forgetting to... Is that is that all you need to know? Should I go is, on? Is, is Udoka a Manchester United fan? I'm a nah, football a, fan. I love awesome. watching football and I support the winning team. And one of them oh, is actually top of the goodness. EPL. So, Fair weather friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Israel Adesanya, who was arrested earlier on and briefly detained at a New York airport on Wednesday after he attempted to go through security with brass knuckles. According to Port Authority Police, the, U the former UFC champion was arrested at the JFK terminal for possessing metal uh, knuckles. Now, it, the knuckles made of metal or plastic are illegal in New York and possession is considered a misdemeanor, punishable by up to one year in prison plus fines. And for Adesanya's manager, Tim Simpson, the issue is issued a statement to the MMA fighting while also stating that the former UFC champion has already been released and he is currently flying home to New Zealand. Adesanya had been in New York for several days as he prepared for his fight against Alex Pereira at, that's at the main event of the UFC 281. He ultimately suffered a fifth round knockout loss, which cost him the UFC middleweight and uh, it is his second career defeat. Adesanya remained in New York after the fight, but now appears on his way home after briefly being detained by the authorities on Wednesday. And to tennis, Wimbledon doubles junior champion Angela Okutoi thumbed into this round of 16 at the W15 World Tennis Tour after defeating Sharanya Shetty, 6 love, 6 love, on the clay courts of Karen Country Club on Wednesday. The 2018 Kenya Open winner took 46 minutes to dispatch the 20-year-old Indian qualifier. The former Africa Under-18 champion who is playing at home for the first time in over a year joins her twin sister, Rosalida Asumwa, in the second round. They are, only, they, they are the only Kenyans remaining in the singles main draw. And Nigeria's divine Nweke has also advanced to the next round after a win over Dominic Ernst from Switzerland, 6-3, 6-4. From tennis, let's talk about football now. As Kenya Sports Cabinet Secretary, Ababu Namwamba, says there is hope for world football governing body, FIFA, to lift the ban on Kenya football. Amamba spoke after meeting with top officials from local sports federations, asking them to prepare for massive transformation that will kickstart a new dawn in sports development in the country at all levels. The exercise was rolled out to address a wide array of issues that have afflicted the federations for a while now. And the cabinet secretary called on those managing the federations to desist from engaging in unnecessary sideshows, warning that the government will not fund federations that have been blacklisted for embezzling public funds. For bans and suspensions to be lifted, the cabinet secretary said the government would accelerate the resolution of all issues plaguing local federations. And to the World Cup now, the organizers on Wednesday came to the defense of Indian fans in Qatar who have been labeled fake for wearing the shirts of football's powerhouse nations. Thousands of supporters, mainly from India and other South Asian nations, took part in a parade in Doha the sparked suggestions they had been paid to wear Argentina, Brazil and England shirts as a stunt to promote the tournament. The Indian fans have been outraged by the accusations, insisting they are passionate about the sports. Now the Qatar Organizing Committee has weighed in, issuing a strong worded statement backing the contributions of the fans. He's talking about the World Cup six years later on the eve of his second World Cup as president. Gianni Fantino speaks about the impact of football on the whole world and also spoke about the state of the art stadiums in Qatar, the host nation, for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. But what is more important than that, and this is something I discovered after I became FIFA president and I was traveling around the world, is that uh, through football, you can really change the life 
of so many people, not just those who become world stars, but just those men and women and more and more girls all over the world who, by playing football, um, reach a different level of esteem, of self-esteem, of, of dignity, of, of positioning. In, uh, in their society, and this is something that... When it comes to the World Cup stadiums here in, in Qatar, eight state-of-the-art stadiums, I mean, one is more beautiful than the other, it's really difficult to, to choose uh, uh, and pick one. Of course, the Lusail Stadium, where the final will take place, is special. The Albeit stadium where the opening match uh, is taking place as well with this tent is the, the shape of a tent of an arab tent is extremely beautiful the stadium we are here uh, it's called the 974 stadium because it's built with 974 containers um, and after the world cup the containers will be closed and the whole stadium will be shipped this will be quite a unique world cup because it's a very compact World Cup with eight stadiums in uh, 50 kilometers. Uh, you can watch more than one game per, uh, per, per day, which is again unique. This never happened in any World Cup and it will never happen in the future as well, because everything is happening here. All right, so words from Gianni Fantino, the FIFA president, talking about the World Cup, which kicks off this Sunday, the 20th of November, and it will end on the 18th of December. The teams are already prepared and uh, they will be kick-starting their journey from Sunday. And for the stadium, of course, we're expecting a very, very beautiful atmosphere over there in Qatar. And because of the heat, uh, that's the scorching uh, heat conditions over there in Qatar, a man called Mr. Kula has ensured that the fans will enjoy air conditioning at the football pitches. So uh, we're looking forward to that one and uh, exciting times in the world of football. And that's a wrap from me, Udoka Njoku, on Sports Updates on Breakfast Central. Back to you, Joe. And Oli. Wait, what are the odds that the man's name is Mr. Kula and his responsibility is to make the environment cooler? Yes, of course. He intentionally called himself that name because he, it's very difficult for you to um, put air conditioning facilities in a, a stadium as big as you want to see in Qatar. So I actually look forward to see how the fans are going to enjoy, enjoy that one and uh, the atmosphere over there to battle the heat in Qatar. I do like the technological system that's been put in place. There was an explainer video that explained how uh, the cooling system will have to actually uh, come from under, mm -hmm. um, um, open up, cool it off a bit, take yeah. it in, work with the air that's filtrating and so mm -hmm. on. And then I like the fact that they have collapsible stadiums. Yeah, You exactly. could collapse like it, move it to another place and exactly. so on. But there's a whole lot going on. I mean, myself and Oliver were talking about the protests where uh, countries like Mexico, Iran have said, hey, we're mm -hmm. really going to protest uh, at the World Cup. And uh, Gianni Infantino has said, please do not protest. Just come, enjoy the game and go. And yeah. then you do have a rep uh, of um, uh, Qatar who has said, listen, you cannot come to our country and force us to accept gays. Mm -hmm. When you go to a nation, you respect them. So exactly. you respect us. Uh, because there are statements that people are planning to go to the stadium with flags. Of mm. course, the... Uh, Pride you know, flags. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the colored flags. Uh, and mm. they're saying, please don't do that. Because if you do that, we're going to get you and take you out and the likes. And we also saw a journalist uh, from um, Sky News yesterday who was stopped from filming. Yeah. And he was... Even when he presented his, uh, uh, his cre credentials that he's able to film, mm. uh, his camera... They were telling him there that we're going to break your camera. Exactly. I was like, really? Is this a World Cup or what? I mean, you know, it, it's, really, it's really difficult. And the Qatari officials have set rules and regulations regarding how to behave in Qatar. And uh, most football fans across the world are saying, look, we are coming in with our own passion, our own culture. And Qatari officials are saying, no. Now, yesterday I heard the USA national team will have to put the uh, LGBT colors on their uh, team uh, jersey, the flag. And I'm wondering, do we really need all of this? The FIFA officials have said, look, let's come in here and enjoy football. Leave the well, protests behind. <sighs> I know on the one hand that Gianni Infatino says we should separate football from protests and allow people to just come and enjoy mm. football. But another co conversation you know, people have started to have is, are we really ever going to get to the point where we can find a fine marriage between sports and the individual lives? Why? Because the people who play the sports 
come from countries and families where several issues are disturbing them. And an, an example, of course, would be in Iran, where the 22-year-old girl unfortunately was yeah. murdered by the, I always do this, morality police, because I don't understand mm -hmm. what is their moral about that. Yeah. So the question is, these people have issues that they're dealing with. This is their platform yeah. to be able to amplify their struggle. And this is not the first time we've seen of course people not. who have protested in one way or the other, Colin Kaepernick. There's so many other people we've seen, but mm -hmm. sometimes it turns out right, sometimes it doesn't turn out right. They get sanctions or they are banned. Yeah. Maybe it's time for us to review the laws about sports and protests to allow a fine marriage. But mm -hmm. then again, when you get to a country, you'll be the, the rules I, of the I, land. And you know, when it comes to sports, sports brings unity. So let's focus on unity first. Then afterwards, we can go back and settle our differences. All yeah. right. Thank you so much, Doka and Joko, for bringing much. us the updates with sports. We're counting down to the World Cup, and we look forward to seeing all the analysis that will be happening with the matches. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.